Hi, everybody. Welcome to Underground Science. Uh, I want to thank everybody for showing up. And our guest tonight is John from Curse the Bell Witch. And Hi. we are really excited about having him on the show this evening. Thanks uh, for having me on. Oh, we appreciate it. Believe me, I was so excited when I uh, got a hold of you and you got right back to me. And a lot of people don't do that, but that was really great. Um, one thing I can say, it, your show was different. It was different than most of the paranormal shows that are out there. It was more organized, I should say. You weren't running around in a bunch of areas, just hollering at people, trying to get reactions from spirits and so forth like that. It, it's you were y'all were methodical on how you went about that. Can I mean a lot of people have asked me about how you set that up. So can you go into that? Well, we we approached it, uh, of course, you know, I, for our law enforcement, my friend Chad, he was also uh, law enforcement, so we approached this from an investigative method. Um, I know, you know, one of the things I liked about when I was approached with the show is that, you know, hey, you know, we're going at it like real cops. And, you know, we were real cops, and, you know, there's not many real investigators. You know, they, they wow. haven't been an investigator for a living um, and while they're doing, you know, approaching this. And we had the help of, of people that were just like in an ordinary case. Uh, of course, we normally, you know, they bring psychics into murder cases. You know, here we brought in guys like Nick and Sarah and... Um, uh, the shaman, uh, which is there, he's an awesome guy, and of course John Zappas, and you know all these people, the chem, the the chemistry uh, uh, professor, the, the the geologist, all these things. When we had a question, what we would do as investigators, we brought the same concept, principle, and method to doing this because, uh, and I, hopefully we're, you know. Hopefully, try, trying to break some new ground on this one, but also tell the tell the story and you know get get to the desired uh, point of <laughs> breaking the curse. I think that that was probably the top question I had from everybody. Um, um, one thing I'd like to go into is your history with learning about the curse in your family. Well, uh, that started at, um, I mean, that started at, you know, seven years old, uh, six, seven years old. That was, uh, that was uh, told to me by my grandmother, my aunts, my mom. And, um, you know, that was uh, a legacy passed down. You're, you're like, here you go. You have a family curse, and this is what it's about. And you have to forgive me. I'm I'm in the forty year old eye thing, so, um, you know. Uh, so so basically, John, when, when you were when you were doing the show, yeah, you had, and I, and I'd like to say this, you had the most intense look throughout the show. Like you're like, something's going to jump out at me. Not so, not squash, or not like yeah. that. But like you had this intense look on your face. I mean, was that because you're freaked out? I mean, because was that your fight or flight going on, or basically was it just like, hold on a second, man, I gotta take this stuff in because this is, I got a kid, I gotta worry about. You know, I got others in my family, I gotta worry about. How? What brought that to the uh, screen? Well, it's uh, you know, it's serious business, serious work. You know, um, I I approach this just like I would any other law enforcement case. And um, you know, you if you were on the other side of of me uh, interviewing you or talking to you as as a law enforcement officer, you would definitely see me serious. And uh, but there, you know, there's a lot of stressors involved in this because, um, you know, once again, I'm I'm one of the few in my family that is law that was law enforcement and uh, military background stuff like that. So, and this comes from my mother's side of the family, my southern side. My other side is from uh, the Boston 
Massachusetts area. So, uh, which is funny, um, and it's weird. My grandfather actually lived. Uh, my dad grew up in an area, um, Old Salem. <laughs> oh, cool. Peabody, Massachusetts, which is uh, basically what what Salem was uh, in that whole Salem area. So you have one side with the third, you know, you have one side, you're walking over to where the, the Salem witch is, and then here I am with my southern side with the bell witch. So Got it from both uh, let's double uh, this one. <laughs> um, That's one thing I don't think I've, I've brought out anywhere. So. Well, how did the idea for the show come about? Did you get approached on this? Is it something that someone found out that maybe you were going to be looking into it, or how did that go? Well, it, it, yeah, this has been, uh, with any show, there's a process that's right. involved uh, getting it to the air. Um, they, you know, they did approach me and said, look, you know, we, because of your background, and it's kind of well known um, that, uh you know, we will. We would like to help you look into this. You know, um, of course, with anything, you don't show up and you don't show up with a whole bunch of cameras. You know, in in your ordinary day life. So, right. you know, <laughs> but I definitely don't want to don't want to ruin the mystique in that in that respect because uh, you know it was uh, it. <laughs> It's like a journey they're help you, helping you get along with, and you get to put maybe more into it or get to bring other people into it that maybe you wouldn't have before. Uh, yeah. And, you know, and, uh, and I, I had my... I chose uh, Chad to come on the show with me and come along with me on that one because, you know, we, we, served, uh, we served a year in Iraq together, so... And we've been good friends for like 13 years, and um, well, well, more. <laughs> um, and uh, you know, who who better to trust? All right. I mean, and you can tell from different parts, different things happening. You driving down the road, though, and it's just like you kind of spaced out a little bit. And he's like, you know, pull over. You shouldn't have been driving. I mean, you can see that he's, you know, there for you. Uh, yeah. I'm a bad insomniac sometimes, so <laughs> I well, get going no, and yeah, I get going and uh, and I don't I don't stop. I'm uh, just uh, basically one of those driven personalities. Once I get it, once I get on something, I I stick with it to the end. So, um, but yeah, uh, uh, Chad was uh, invaluable on this, and uh, you never know what the future may bring. So. Um, you know, I think uh, I I've been interested. This this curse has got me interested in others. So because um, I've actually studied a, a lot of other curses as it would apply to my family legend and curse. So um, hey, you know, hey, it's an interest. I got I, I have a question um, there, John. Real quick, how much of the curse? From what you read, because you know how history changes, and when, especially um, um, when you're dealing with oral history, a lot of that the bell, which from the start would have been oral history. How much? How much of it do you believe? Yeah. How, much, how much of it? I don't mean to sound loaded. I don't mean I'm not coming off as trying to ask a loaded question. I'm really not. But yeah. how much of it do you question sometimes? And how much of it do you go? This is real. Well, I mean, you know, once again, law enforcement, I question everything, um, you know, until I get the facts in front of me, and that, and that was part of the show, and part of this journey was going to, to change. So I, somebody actually mentioned this was one of the first comprehensive investigations into this, uh, besides just showing up and, you know, looking for, yeah. This is not a ghost show. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. It's not a ghost show. We are looking for, you know, it's more investigative and history and things that happen while that happens. Well, that's another story. But, yeah, I mean, I, I question everything until I get cold, hard facts in front of my face, and I go over them and I question them. Um, you know, I, 
I question this whole thing like like it was a suspect. You know, I have a case to to assault, and um, it 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 carried us through. Uh, you know, you guys watched it. Um, we enjoyed it. Uh, I've got a question. Is there sure. a reason for season two to come along? I would hope so. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I've been you know I've been incredibly interested in the looking. Uh, of course, with this one, you know, I don't know. What's your opinion? Did 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 it feel solved to you guys watching it? Mm -hmm. No, it felt like maybe there would be more going on. So that's, I, I like the way it ended. I, I like yeah. how that was done. But it, <laughs> yeah. it, it left you hanging. You do not know. And, you know, and I've there's nothing out there on the Internet I've seen that says, yeah, it's solved. It's, you know, where anybody's come out with any spoilers or, you know, anybody who may have been on the crew has said anything because I did look for that. So yeah. that's, you know, I thought, ooh, maybe there's going to be a second season and, you know, maybe it'll go off in a little bit different direction. Or well, Also, what you kind of wonder is um, there was probably since, you know, people don't realize when you do um, TV shows how many hours of actual footage of being filmed and being in front of the camera for just a small amount of, like an hour's worth for A&E. To put a is A and E if I'm correct, right? To uh, yes, a &E. to put you know to put down there all the B roll footage that you got to get done, all this other and what else happened? I always wonder what else could have happened that they just didn't get on the show because they have a set time of getting you know they have dates they gotta they gotta meet. Yeah, this was like a, a two months. Um, I don't want to I don't want to destroy the. Uh, the the mystique of anything, but yeah, it was uh, it it was extensive, and I, I have to say, and the, the crew that we had along with us, they were just uh, the producers and and the crew that 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 did this for us, um, and w I got a chance to work with them. It, it was um, is outstanding. Uh, the the <laughs> the guy the guy the DP on this one was just um, I, I would hand him any movie any day. He, he was an artist, and um, but it takes a lot to capture this. And there's some things in there. I think uh, there's a couple of <laughs> very strange things. I don't even think that made the show. That was even, you know, there's there's certain time limits you got to go into to getting it on. I had once they, you know, once they it got to the the network, I was kind of, you know, I did what I did. And, they did what they did. <laughs> right, they take over after so, you're done. Yeah, yeah, they take over after I'm done, and they they do the the you know the technical stuff. I'm I'm you know I'm an ex cop and an investigator. I'm not a um not a filmmaker. Uh, well, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I I kind of fell into that. Um, I, I don't I don't direct. I um I I do appear on other things. I. Kind of, I know some people have seen me on other programs or whatever. Uh, about eight years ago, I kind of fell into the industry. Uh, I went out to um, Los Angeles. Uh, my dad was passing, and um, I worked uh, a private military contractor. And I, I just kind of fell into the film and TV side because it was there. Right. Uh, started. Um, a weapons advisor, tactical, you know, working with some of the actors, and they're like, "Well, why don't you do this?" I was like, "Okay, <laughs> it's a job, you know." I've <laughs> worked uh, everything from uh, being a Navy corpsman to uh, <coughs> uh, EMT, um, uh, law enforcement, uh, work, you know, patrol, narcotics, state. I mean, all over the place. Worked investigation. Uh, were I uh, said also work private investigations too as of late, and uh, just come from the old school way of thinking, you know, do something interesting, do a job, and um, this is one. This is kind of one of my investigations. That that's uh, that, sure. Yeah, go ahead, sorry. That, that's cool because uh, what about that one scene where they were busting you for was it trespassing? 
Remember you guys were out like looking for the homestead? Not, not, yeah. Was that more set up, or was that you actually got busted for <laughs> trespassing? I got to ask that to a cop. You know, well, I, I mean, it was a great scene, but it, it, I was just curious. I was like, "Damn, they're cops and they got busted for trespass." It's kind of funny, but you well, know, there's I don't no, know. yeah, there's no, you know, I didn't, I didn't see a trespassing sign. Um, and until you, you know, that, that's that's my, you know, my family land, uh, mm -hmm. you know, down the road, down the line, um, not mine, but you know. Um, <laughs> Yeah, and on top of that, you know, I, I, I have to say, I'm, I'm armed, ninety nine percent of the time when I'm, I'm out in public. So uh, because of not only what I do as an investigator, but also, you know, I, I put bad people away for a living for a long time. Right. Sometimes they come right. back, they come back on you. Um, so you have to, and, and not to, not to bang the drum. I believe in that particular freedom that we should exercise it. As much as possible, you know, um, not to the point where you're you're, you're sitting in a national park with uh, and, and asking for snacks or anything, but um, <laughs> to the part where you know you, if you if you don't have a problem and you're not a convicted felon, you should have a gun. Oh, so, totally agree with that. <laughs> yeah, and um, yeah, so yeah, walking up the land, and then all of a sudden we. We come across the, the caretaker um, uh, farmer. Um, I was, uh, yeah, I was like, oops. <laughs> it's not trespassing technically till they tell you to leave, and then you don't, or they have posted trespassing signs. And you're, yeah, so I was like, I don't know, are we trespassing? Well, we got to see, you know. Yeah, no, see, that's like in my area. If it's not posted, you just go right along. He does not understand that from where he lives. I'm, <laughs> we call, I'm in yeah, an we area. Yeah, yeah. You, J J John knows where I live. I mean, my area. Yeah, yeah, I know. I, I know your area. Uh, yeah, you you can mess up pretty easily. It's like it's like Los Angeles. Um, you know, that's that's a difference. I I spend a lot of time in the Biloxi, Mississippi area at, uh, now. Um, but yeah, Los Angeles, um, you know, Los Angeles, New York, you can do something and mess up pretty good innocently. Where uh, one of the things I found that being a cop is where a lot of people are one stupid mistake away from being in a lot of trouble. And uh, you never know when you got to use common sense as much as possible. But common sense is not common virtue. <laughs> yeah, I, very true. So, I got. Uh, it, we call it uh, in this area for paranormal investigation, brick and ladder technique. <laughs> and since yeah. you live in the city, I've got, I'm I'm two for three right now from going to jail for trespassing. One was on um, a battlefield, <laughs> and we we lied to the uh, the park police guy. We're like, listen, we were taking that trail, and we got lost. And then he's like, well, why is your car parked right there? We were actually trying to find a way to kayak in to do a paranormal investigation in the back way at night. And so I was like, here's my ID. Lucky I have no priors. I, I've never been arrested in my life. And then another time, yeah. uh, I was at a uh, sanitarium, and all of a sudden, some redneck from hell near Baltimore comes hauling ass in his pickup truck. I'm going to call the police. I'm going to call the police. And I'm sitting there going, well, I'm trying to figure out, well, I'm trespassing. It is posted, but I haven't gone into any buildings. Nor was I going into any buildings. Yeah. And then he tried to tell me it was illegal for me to take pictures of the building. And I'm going, dude, oh, I will go to uh, court on that one. But, yeah, it, yeah, and after that, I got talked out of that one. And after that, I learned my lesson. <laughs> yeah, definitely don't lie to the cops because that, that's, uh, that's what gets our little cackles up when we start, yeah. when we start hearing people start lying to you. You're like, oh, yeah, this is where the fun begins. <laughs> He's um, got a but yeah. rule. I'm working on training him on that when I take him out around here looking at uh, abandoned places. He just, you know, he's got to learn. I, well, I get a little yeah, paranoid because I'm used to an area where there's too many cops. There's cops everywhere in my apartment complex. There's like three yeah. cops that live next door. I feel safe. Don't get me wrong. I feel totally safe. But when I'm out in the country where you live, John, and Lynette, yeah. I, 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 don't, I feel so out of place. You know, I feel actually, like. Yeah, actually, where I live uh, is um, um, 
it's I have a I'm I'm a it's like a beach. Uh, it's it's on the coast, so it's uh, it's like Florida more than what you would think Mississippi is. You know, everybody has the impression of Mississippi about being like Mississippi, but it's more like living in Southern California or Florida, Southern Florida. Right. A lot of people, a lot of people from my area will go down there for vacations, rent houses, yeah. do different things like that. Uh, I know one thing that I always thought was great when you did it, it you kept up with your son. I mean, and you made that a part of the show, so everybody knew you were definitely a dad, no questions about it. And I thought that was how did I thought that was great, but how did he feel about doing that? Did he get a kick out of being on the show? Yeah, he's kind of hot and cold. Uh, you know, I'm used to being in front of the camera and and you know being in the public eye, and he's kind of hot and cold with it. He's a little bit more shy than 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 me, especially at that age. Which uh, I told him, I was like, you know, uh, God, I, you know, I wish, uh, wish my dad would have been on TV at, when I was fourteen. <laughs> you know, uh, I think it it actually garnered uh, a little attention at school or different places he's at, uh, especially I think from a cheerleader. So uh -huh. I mean, <laughs> so uh, they're like, oh, he's cute. I was like, yep, that's my boy. But. Uh, <laughs> I've got but, uh, kids that get mad when I post their picture on Facebook. So Yeah, no, um yeah, he he was he you know, he was in the middle with that, but he you know, he, he generally he's like, Oh, this is okay. You know, he wasn't you know, he was kinda excited but all at the same time he's like, this is okay. Because you know, teenagers are very self conscious right. about a lot of things. Um but yeah, no, I, I keep up with my son and uh when, actually when I was living in LA I'd I'd come back and forth. A lot, and um, you know, when I was uh, I was deployed for uh, military side, and then later with uh, I, I won't mention what company, but with the uh, uh, private military firms overseas in Iraq and other places for several years. So I would come back and forth and visit. So I've always kept up with my son, and I have uh, I also have a 21 year old daughter too. Oh, hi. Uh, she's yeah, she's she's not. She's like, eh, I don't know if I want to be on TV, so, <laughs> so she's like, kind of stayed away from it. All right, now I've got a question because I know we saw quite a bit of footage of you like in the middle of the night walking around, uh, yeah. and was that? I mean, you just pacing around, thinking, or I mean, because it almost looked like you might have been sleepwalking kind of at times when you were doing well, that. No, never. Uh, I've never sleep. I have never sleepwalked, but you know, a lot of stress. That was a lot of stress-inducing uh, circumstances, and um, you know, I, I different p people handle stress different ways, and. You know, number one, uh, I I always always put it out there. In order to have that badge in the first place, you got to have a uh, you know you have to go through uh, psychological testing and doing a lot of things I've done. So, not crazy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but you you heard a noise uh, one time, didn't you? I remember when because your buddy woke up and you weren't there, and you just kind of they had you on night vision. Kind of just yeah. walking, walking around, and that that was that definitely was kind of like um a kind of like a creepy scene actually. I got I gotta say yeah, it's a little creepy. Yeah, because you have this look on your face like something is out here, <laughs> and I just gotta figure out what the hell is out here. And I thought that was just one of the creepiest scenes of that episode that I saw. And I, I'm a I'm a one of those four hour sleeper types. So uh, <laughs> um, you know when I when when I lose when I lose uh, it, it was a, a lot of not not sleeping on during that time too. So it it takes your toll. It, it does take it does take its toll temporarily sometimes to kind of stress you out a lot. So oh, that I understand. But, uh, what was the I don't know what was the one thing that may have surprised you the most, maybe paranormal wise, that happened that you never would have expected. I'm getting questions, and I don't know if yeah. any questions have come up. Oh yeah, up shoot them, shoot them on. Uh, well, paranormal wise, uh, it you know I 
I'm very cynical, you know. I'm I'm a cynical cop, and to see, to see some of you know, see some of the footage played back, and and then you know, then myself watching the show, I'm like, whoa, uh, you know, things I didn't notice, and people make comments on that that I have a higher threshold of what scares me, um, you know. Due to what you know, I'm not going. Oh my God! You know, something something moved in the shadows or whatever. So yeah, when it reaches that threshold, um, uh, <laughs> yeah, it, it 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 has to be something to reach that threshold. And the things that I've uh, come across, <coughs> kind of, there's a couple of things that really freak me out, and I'm not easy to freak out. I'm not, you know, overly macho guy. That, but you hold, that your that you hold your own. You hold your own. I hold my own. Yeah, I'm not going. Oh, nothing yeah, scares me. Yeah. Yeah. But but <laughs> but but you're gonna do what you got to do when you got to do it. So. Oh yeah, and that you know, with the paranormal side of it is uh, is a little creepier because I can't reach out and touch that and correct its actions. <laughs> right. Well, I, I always was told if if I can't shoot it and make it bleed, then I really don't want to mess with it. it was, yeah. So. Which of course I, I've I've yet to have something really scare me. I haven't been in maybe the situation like you have with that. I've investigated several places. Nothing that has to do with me. Uh, but I know lots of times. For most of us, we go out and there's nothing there. We've got Zombie Road in St. Louis. It's supposed to be one of the scariest places in the United States. And it was beautiful. It was more like a beautiful scenic view. Than a haunted place that I've ever been. And yeah, you know, I don't, I don't think uh, whatever, um, whatever things that are out there that go bump in the night. Yeah, I, I, you know, I have a feeling, I have a belief that there things are out there that we can't understand. And you know, when and I, I try to tell people this because, like I said, for years I've been researching other cursed things because how. It applies, of course, to use the scientific comparative methods of going, you know, if I look into this story, how it applies to my, my family's curse. How did it work on this thing? Well, let's see how that works or what, whatever happens there. And, and then I can go and apply that. Well, I've done the groundwork for the Bell Witch shot. So maybe now... I've been looking into other cursed things, and you know, being cursed is not necessarily just haunted. Right. You know, that's something that's that's deep set into it. Um, say, you know, uh, that was evil or something that made a lasting impression. That okay, haunting and ghosts and all that come along with it. So when we go out there, I'm not just looking for. I'm not ghost hunting. So um, I'm. You know, actually getting into the the meat and potatoes of uh, the curse of right. the. But you know, I'm not. Yeah. yeah, you're you're not you're you're going into the historical aspect too, which I found that why I love the show so much too is because the history. But then you go what what ruined the whole curse thing it was that little time period where Donald Sutherland decided to star in that movie that kind of really screwed the whole thing up. And that's, I liked it, don't get me wrong, it was fun to watch, but I knew right off the bat, I go, this has got to be so off. I mean, and, and then you come along with the real deal, with like the real history of it all, and like put that to rest. I like that. Well, I definitely don't want to piss off those producers and have them sue me, but, uh, um, <laughs> uh, you know. Um, Blame it on cart. Yeah, not <laughs> Well, you know, one no, I, I appreciate it, and uh, and we did look at it from that aspect. Uh, we wanted to get the the truth behind everything, and and really dig, um, dig like any other other case. I would you know have assigned to me or landed in my lap. Uh, this one landed in my family's lap two hundred over t you know two hundred years ago, almost two hundred years ago, and um, well, no, oh, over yeah, over two hundred years ago. Um, but along with that, uh, I, I uh, did. I was on an episode of Big Love with uh, Bill Paxton, 
And uh, <laughs> my apologies. I love them from what's the one with the tornado? Twister. 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 I like Bill Paxton. I'm sorry. I do. I think he's a good actor. Yeah, living it. Yeah, living out in L.A., uh, I, I I end up working, you know, different small speaking roles and you know, and and extra work and advisor work and stuff like that. And it the uh, um remind me uh the mom she played uh, uh she played uh, John Bell's wife in, in the movie. Oh God, what what is her name? Not Loretta Lynn. Uh, um, Tilly Spacek. Okay. Uh, okay. She yeah. was on the show, and I got I got to walk up to her. I says, "You know, you played my great 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 grandmother." <laughs> and she's like, "What?" <laughs> I says, "You played, yeah, you played, uh, you you know, I'm I'm a member of the Bell family." And she goes, "Oh, really?" She says, "I," and I won't say what her response to the movie was. <laughs> so, but it, it was it was an interest. She gave an interesting response to it. I'll leave it at that. Have you ever had? Have you have had you since the show's been out, the family members from the other family contacting you? Yes, uh, I stay in. I stay in contact with uh, with Bob uh, a lot. Um, my my now long lost cousin that um, we, we've connected. Um, I, I talk to the Bats family, and that's one of the things uh, I, I've got some comments on before because you know we went to the bat side on on this show. We wanted to go to all sides of this, right. and you know if you don't do it. You know I see some other shows, and I'm not going to dog them at all. Uh, but you know we wanted. I'm a history geek. I love it. Um, I really get I really get into the history side, and uh, so that's. So hopefully that came across how how interested I am in that one. And yes, I was a uh, I was pretty solemn in the show, but like I said, serious work, serious business. You know, I put my game face on and get this done. And there's a lot going on with it. But yeah, no. Um, to circle back, yeah, to totally stay in touch with those guys now. So I, I you know I got more more family now. Oh well, that works. <laughs> so. Uh. Uh, did, have we got any questions from the chat room, Kurt? Uh, chat room, uh, we have, let me see. No, just me a bunch of smiles. Cause I th I, we had issues with getting the chat room open, John, because it's it, this is done through like many different ways of clicking this, clicking that, get involved in this yeah. link, get that link connected to this link. And I, I'm usually yeah. I'm, I'm usually goes unless it's this one. And there's always something I screw up. <laughs> whenever I do it. Because the other shows work fine because my co-host is like a techie. That's, he's out of England. The show's all out of England, out of Liverpool. So, you know, this yeah. all goes back to Liverpool and done and then sent back to this. But I I, I, I screw things up. I, I tend to screw things up, but I don't mean to. It, it just happens. You know how it is in life, dude. You just are like, some things you're better off at than others. But uh, I got a question on... Um, there was a scene where you guys were using ground penetrating radar, if I'm correct. Yeah. Okay, and they did find something there, which all of a sudden you go, I want to see if it's a body. Come on. And the guy goes, it could be a body. And then, boom. They, they you know, the editors just cut that off and put it on to something else. God, what the hell did they find, dude? Can you say? Well, well you saw, uh, well, um, let's see which part was it the uh, wh where the sm uh, the marker stones were, um, or that, are you that would have been that would have been there there around their their house right where their markers oh where where the tree was I think it was a tree or somewhere where they saw the indentation when they were doing the read on it I was just because I I'm, I'm a geek I mean I'm this history geek too and I'm looking at this going I want to know what you know and then all of a sudden they cut it to something else and I'm going. Damn, he said there might have been a body, and we don't even get to see it. And I thought A and A and E was like the channel to show it. You know, it was, it, it was just so damn cool, dude. Yeah, forty-eight hours. You know. Um. Yeah, that's what it was. <laughs> I was sitting there going, me and probably every other person that's a history geek doing the same thing. Going, come on, man. Say there's a body. Get dig it up. Show us a body. <laughs> show us a body. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is a this is a very 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 old cold case. Very cold, yeah. cold, cold case. 
Um, uh, that area, we did find a, a piece of bone, and we did find some other things. And in that area, there's a marker where those markers were. It was, well, of course, I'm not digging into that area, especially finding out mm -hmm. uh, what what those markers were. It could have been something. Um, I, I mean, they would have to excavate that. But um, the moment they did that, you know, portion you know, the uh, the archaeologist would take over. Yeah, that's so, um, County right there taking over that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, and um, but it, it it could have been, could have been, could be. Don't know. Um, I mean that that area was uh, full of Native American um, activity, and from what we discovered is that was a, a, a grave. Pretty much a grave area for them. That's what those markings. That's what the, the shaman told us. Uh, well, uh, alluded oh, to. Well, and, uh, uh, Willie Windwalker. Yeah, we've had him on our show a long, long yes. time ago. Yeah, we've had Willie on a long, long time ago. So, yeah. But yeah, he. Yeah. Uh, Who got so that, it? Great. That, that was that was interesting because you think of the curse. And, I mean, you figure. Yeah, they say, oh, the witch. You know, it's always the witch, the witch, the witch. I think yeah. it goes further back. I think it go further back than that. Because, you know, you, you, you talk about land haunts. And I, don't, I know we're not talking paranormal, and I, and I understand that. But you talked about the, the, the how long the natives have lived there. And yeah. what they have done that could have brought this about on your whole family for whatever reason. I mean, I, I, I'm a believer that... I'd go in that direction before I go on some wish casting a spell. But that's just my my take on it. That's all. Well, I mean, if you look at it, curses are in the Bible. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm not I'm not a Bible thumper or anything. You know, but I I do have uh you know I do believe and I do have faith and um you know I I'm just not one of those people to push it on other people. But um I mean it's in the Bible. That's what you know. That's um. Jewish side, mm -hmm. Christian side, you know, um, it's there. So I mean, uh, there, you know, curses, curses can affect things. You know, they can affect people. And w one of the things with this is, it's a generational curse, and that's, you know, that's shown in um, I don't know, first first part of the Bible. <laughs> so mm -hmm. that's a pretty good book. <laughs> a lot of people read it, uh, so. Uh, but yeah, no. Um, and I'm definitely uh, right now. Lately, I, my cousin, one of my cousins on on my on this side, the southern side, uh, he's he's Choctaw, and uh, they just mm -hmm. actually uh, have stood up a reser uh, new reservation in this area that I guess was here beforehand, uh, a tribe here. And, you know, I've talked to him at, at length with that, and I was like, yeah, I don't, you know, being respectful, I don't mess around with that. Mm -mm. You know? Right. You, don't, you, don't play, you don't play catch with a hand grenade. <laughs> <laughs> Kirkwood. No. no, Kirkwood, uh, believe me. Yeah. What out of anything would you like for people to take from your show? I mean, I like the way it was set up, the, you know, where you went, down each possible idea of the car, you know, the daughter poisoning her dad, maybe different things like that. Uh, you dig it into history, that's something we do when we investigate. Uh, I mean, because we both like history, uh, just different things. It's not even with the paranormal all the time. Uh, but out of all that, the different things, what would you like maybe anybody that investigates to get out of that, that maybe? They could add or you know you useful for them to investigate with. I guess I'm a long way of saying it, but trying to think of how to word it. I uh, know. Um, I, I think I think I'm getting you on this one. Um, you know. Uh, well, one. Hopefully they enjoy the show. <laughs> Hello there. Good yeah, this is the baby. And we've been joined by Fluffy White Dog. Um, <laughs> it's, it's cursed, believe me, it's cursed. Yeah. It's the only reason we're bringing it on. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, uh, well, first of all, hopefully, as I said, people enjoyed the show. Um, I think 
I think we did something different, and hopefully, you know, we can we have the possibility to continue on in 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 a different way. Um, fact is that yeah, think strange things are out there. Your history does, you know, we are the sum of our history, and you know, sometimes it was bad, sometimes it was good, and you know, you have to, uh, you know, go after like in this in this. Instance, the this could be something that would affect my son, my grandsons, my future generation, and it was you know I felt it was upon me to to go after it, you know, instead of just letting it letting it lie. Who and uh, who came to you, yeah. John, or did you come up with it yourself? The idea of saying, "Listen, I'm in the line. I'm in the bell line." And actually, I work at a I work at a haunt, a so-called haunted museum called the Bell Dawson House about the Bell family, yeah. and it's another Bell awesome. family from up here. But what would you? How did you come about the with that idea to pitch? Well, it was fifty fifty. They they uh they said they also came to me on this and gave me uh gave me the opportunity to go after this. So you know um I and this is. Unrelated, uh, I did. You know, I'm I'm a writer, and I, I've written some things. And you know, I, I would also I've showed that I had interest in pursuing this. And they they reached out and said, "Would you like to do this?" I'm like, "Okay, <laughs> let's go." Um, so yeah, it's a fifty fifty <laughs> networks, and you know, and then I you know I came in and said that I, I was agreeable to it, and then we took it from there. Can, so. can, you, can you tell people real quick, quick for each show how much footage was actually filmed? What because people don't realize they see on TV, they watch what happens to you and, and your buddy, and how you do things, but they, they don't realize how much footage or how much time in front of the camera you are, or they come and get their B-roll shots much a little bit later. But how much time goes into each show? Yeah, no, it's it it's it's intensive. Um, a lot of the things we did on that show was, you know, as as you were doing it. So, um, you know, they were they were getting us, you know, following us around and stuff like that. Um, but also, you know, with the beat once again with uh, with the crew, and you know, uh, camera guys uh, and the rest of the crew, uh, they you know they did their B roll stuff, and it was it was beautiful. I, I well, when I was watching, I'm like, wow. You know, I, I didn't expect anything less, but I, when I saw it, I was really blown away with the, the, the cinematic way. It, it, it was more like a movie than, you know, like uh, just uh, hear the little handy video stuff. Uh, they had some really good shots, and that is so be it was a beautiful area, too. So, it, yeah, it, it's... it's it's extensive. <laughs> it's uh, yeah, any, any getting the footage that you need. It, yeah, it's it can get extensive and long days. Very. That I, I bet. So. Uh, now, hopefully, we'll be able to see you come back on the second season of the Bell Witch. But I know you said you're looking looking into other curses. If you've got a chance to. Maybe have another show concerning another curse. Is there a particular one you'd like to start with? Um, you know, I looked at a couple. I looked at uh, uh, Giles Corey in uh, in Massachusetts. Uh, I looked at the Cornstalk Curse. Um, these are both uh, generational curses. Um, and uh, what would be great is I know there, I know there's people out there without. Famous curses, you know that that maybe they want that looked into also, you know. Um, maybe go to a couple of them that you know or mirror uh, things that would mirror the Bell Witch legend and curse. And by going through those, if I can get a better idea with my my family's legend and curse by comparing them, if I look into them, I can say, okay, well, this happened with this curse or this was a cause or the result of that and how does that apply to the Bell Witch side. But what you're doing John also which I, I, I applaud you for 
is you're 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 actually believe it or not whether they whether you're in front of the camera or doing this off camera you're, you're slow you're, you're a storyteller and storytellers are dying out in this country all the time and as in the curse or the Giles Corey curse or anything else with that ability I mean I applaud you for that Oh, please tell the networks. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, and I'm not trying to blow smoke. But it's, yeah, it's just, I definitely wow. like to bring that. But I appreciate it. Thank you. Well, it's something we um, don't get to see a lot of anymore. I mean, what? Dallas, uh, is, Dallas is, is usually my co-host. He's a folklorist, basically. He can go into a story, and, and it's you know similar to what you can do. Uh, it, but to me, the show was a, just a whole different platform from all the other paranormal shows on there. Just because how you went about it, you know, in the topic, yeah. But it, it's just, you know, you're not, like I said, you're not out there screaming it. You know, if you're here, scratch me or anything like that. I like it because you go through it intelligently. It wasn't on what you do. Yeah, and it wasn't meant to be paranormal either, which was cool. Right. That 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 was well, that's what really caught my interest because I was like, it's the only show because you know you get so much other you know you got so much other crap on TV right now, and it's crap. Yeah. You and I know. I mean, we've had them on either we've had them on the show or we've seen them or it's just a go like they tell us the same thing like, dude, it's television, and that's how they say <laughs> television. But this isn't. This is more than that. You know, and, and you got something good, man. And I tell you, John, we really hope you get a second season out of it. Oh, I mean, well, I hope so. Hope so too. Uh, um, you know, and I, I wanted, I definitely wanted a show that I would watch. You know, I'm, I'm kind of picky on what I would watch too. Right. And um, you know, there's, I wouldn't want to do something I wouldn't want to watch either. So, uh, you know, it, it was something I was incredibly interested in, and that hopefully that. Sh shown through um, but yeah no, I mean if going after other things would be you know would be a great thing but yes telling the story I mean that's if you look at your movie and your TV series and your scripted side um, you know it, it all started around a campfire you know before we had TV before we had books and whatever there was somebody that passed that oral history on and you know I Sometimes TV spoon feeds people too much instead of letting them, you know, engaging them with that and telling that story and getting, you know, getting them involved in it and drawing them in. Um, but as I said, this, right this drew that. me in. Yeah, this drew me in. So. But one thing, one thing out there too is I noticed is, is it came to you. You didn't come scratching at their door going, put me on TV, put me on the show, put me on this. Because a lot of people I've noticed whether, well, this isn't paranormal. I want to tell everybody, this is not a paranormal show whatsoever. But in the paranormal world, in comparison, you got all these people that are wannabes. I want to be on TV. Like, I'll flick TV on and go on, I knew that guy before he said he was a medium. I'm going, this is ridiculous. Yeah. This is ridiculous. You know, and it, it's just... <laughs> It's dude, you, you got you got it going on. But on that note, um, John, um, what do you have to plug right now? Because uh, we're getting ready to close up shop. Well, um, uh, right now, uh, I I may start. I mean, I've been asked on doing appearances here or there, so I may start doing that. Um, I, I'm 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 still doing cases. Uh, I, I I work. I still have a regular gig. And uh, you know, I go around doing investigative cases. Um, a possibility that you know I could be doing some. If I if if I do or do not do this the next season, I could be doing things on the scripted side, um, possibly. And I, I'm a writer, so yeah, something that, to keep me busy, pay the bills and keep me busy. <laughs> so. so Pretty simple uh, on that one. Go ahead, Lynette. I was going to say, with your knowledge of curses, maybe a book or two on curses would be great. Maybe not specific. You could do about particular curses or maybe just think up one on your own and stick a good story with it. 
Yeah, I, I would, you know, as uh, far as the docudrama side, this would be the only thing I would do uh, is continue on this, this line. I don't, I don't think I'm really interested in any other, other than a traveling drinking show, maybe. <laughs> but, Those travelers. I think oh. they got that already, but um, yeah, I, I, I would hope that... Uh, I'd like to take this show on the road a little bit further and uh, and and reach out because there's, you know, there's other people out there that have that same. I, I would think there's other people that have that same history out there, right. you know, uh, that they feel that they have a curse that has affected their family, and hopefully it's in New Zealand where you can do surfing and. <laughs> but absolutely not to get too picky on that. <laughs> Not to get picky. No, I'll take I'll take anywhere. But you know, um, uh, you know, there's there's preferred. I I want to find I want to find curses on on islands, you know, or, or Caribbean or something like that. There has to be them somewhere. So I mean, um, Louisiana and the swamps with the gators and mosquitoes and <laughs> yeah, that's that's that. There's actually one or two out there because uh, I I looked there uh, so far. What I've gathered is anywhere from thirty to forty different. First uh, legends and um, o over the years, because like I said, legit. I'm in one of those situations. I was legitimately interested in this and driven on this. So, um, you know, I, there's a lot out there. Mar Marie it's LeBeau awesome. being one of them, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, um, I think there's. Uh, well, like I said, Giles Corey, the Cornstalk one. Um, if you look at um, one of the biggest ones, I really seriously got interested in was uh, Robert Johnson. Oh, at the crossroads. Crossroads, because that's a curse. He he cursed himself by selling uh, selling his soul. Oh. And what you know what happened to him, and then that rolls into the curse of twenty seven. So oh, what's that, what is what is that, by the way? Uh, Curse twenty seven is basically uh, started with Robert Johnson, from my from my research, where uh, he sold his soul to uh, the devil, reportedly, uh, allegedly. I'll, I'll stick with allegedly. Um, <laughs> and uh, from there, he was you know he died mysteriously, and then uh, people like. They used his um, they used his songs like Clapton used his songs Hendrix um, Stevie Vaughan I mean all those guys and so most of those were uh, you know most of them were were and then uh, let's see um, Kurt Cobain oh. you know those guys died at 27 um, there is a little weird I know this is gonna sound kooky but at what point would you sell your soul? I wouldn't because it's eternal. Dude. It's eternal. I'd, no, rather I mean, it's, I'd rather live poor. I'd rather yeah. just be happy with the girlfriend that's good to me. And, and not even have cable TV if it comes down to it. Just have books. Instead yeah. of selling my soul for eternity. Because I'm an agnostic atheist almost. And I'm afraid of that little gray area. is real. Yeah, it's like... <laughs> You get up there and you go, damn. I, I know. Done that. I'm so screwed. <laughs> I didn't to think me, it was going to happen. Yeah. Yeah, to me, if you, on that one. if you were willing to sell your soul, you would almost have maybe nothing else to live for other than the one thing you want. Yeah. Well, one of the things I came, I, my little theory is that uh, you're, you're young and dumb at 17. Of course, yes. You know. Ten year contract, twenty seven. So, and I, I, um, I talked with because um, I, I, like I said, I do my research. Um, <laughs> talked with some witches out in uh, Cal in Hollywood, mm -hmm. and uh, they did a, a summoning, a, a demonic summer summoning thing, and I'm like, wow, okay, playing with fire here. Um, but yeah, no, I, I I'd like to go after the most evil, crazy curses out there and see what they're made of and what they've done to people. And and not only, I mean, look, if you look at um, if you look at parapsychology, which is 
mm-hmm. kind of, you know, branched off of ab- mm-hmm. abnormal psychology. Psych. It's it's really not going after the uh, the the paranormal. It's how the paranormal has affected human mm-hmm. thinking and psychology and feelings. It's not just oh we're you know we're gonna go bust you know go after ghosts. It's how that that makes the humans feel. Um, you know something like uh, a, you know a, a long-standing curse. How how would that make you feel? To know that that's out there. That's you know normally people have things that happen. You know bad, good and bad. But now let's stack let's stack a curse on top of that. Now you're pre you're predestined for something possibly bad to happen. All right, Lynette, you're getting the shoes. I had a paranormal group, uh, John, that found these shoes in an attic up in uh, New England of some really old house. And these people have died who've had them. And this paranormal group would not touch these shoes. I'm like, dude, just send them to me. Because I work at a museum. i got a curator. We can look at the shoes and figure out. And I'm going, wait yeah. for something tragic. I'm, I'm not selling my soul, but I always had that weird interest on what if. You know, it's always, I don't care what happens to me, but what if. And then I look at myself, I go, well, everything that negative that has happened to me, I had an asthma attack and was rushed to the hospital. It was my own fault. Mm-hmm. And I'm thinking to myself, half the time, it's, it's my own fault. I can't blame it on the shoes or the curse that goes with the shoes. And uh, they want to bury the shoes somewhere. I don't know. I still have them. But, but I agree that, with you to live with that. It's kind of scary. It's, it's very scary. Now, yeah, now you have something that's predestined on top of the normal bad things that happen to you in life. Now you have something stacked on you that you have no control over. I mean that has that 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 does affect, you know that 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 was on my mind, you know, and um, I'd like to you know that how it affects other people. I, you know, I've I've been a cop. I I like helping people. That's what I do. You, you know, that's what I've done all my life. Yeah, but being a cop is like you you've seen the best in people and you see the absolute worst in people. You know, and 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 you got, and you got to think though, what w- what would be worse, facing some guy who's on a shooting rampage or worrying about a curse that's going to happen to you? You know, I don't know. I, I'm not in your shoes, and it, it interests me though. Yeah. Um. Well, I mean, with that, you know, they could they could be equally as um dawning. You know, um. A lot of you know, a lot of people. It has driven basically people in my family, you know, pretty, pretty off the rails. And uh, you know, I, I got to you know over time. I've, I was in uh, Saddam's palace in, in oh, Iraq, wow. and um, just you know, I, I learned earlier uh, that they those 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 guys were just absolute evil, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, they drag tons of bodies up and stuff like that, where they just kill people right then and there and dump them in in, in a lake. And I was like, wow, that's just you know evil. The evil like that kind of stains, mm-hmm. you know, different lives and families and earth and objects and stuff like that. I believe that's that's kind of part of it. Is that you know like with your shoes that with that. Pair of shoes. Something had to stain that. To it's you know I, I can believe that there are cursed things and objects and places. Um, I looked into a uh, Bath, North Carolina. That was a pretty famous curse. Where uh, awesome town. It was bustling and it uh, you know it was cursed by a preacher and it just disappeared off the killed the town. Oh. Um, God, Lynette, if we yeah. had tons of money, John, we'd sign you up. You'd have your own show on A&E on curses. <laughs> you, we'd have like an hour, like 12 shows, hour, hour shows, take you all around and do, do your work. <laughs> that would be killer. I'm hoping, I'm hoping they see it my way because that's where I think that's where I'd like to see it go. And um, uh, but we'll we'll see what happens. Uh, it's it's up to the it's up to the network guys from here, so I can't uh, 
I can't say what they're going to do, but I, I have got a lot of feedback from from people out there, and they're like, we want a second season. I'm like, I'm working on it. Sorry, I, I, I kind of harped on that because I was thinking about that today. <laughs> so, hmm. Well, if if the company that did your first show doesn't do a second, maybe another company will. I mean, I, I can I see know. that. Will, I mean, I can I can see where that would be a great show consistently. I mean, it's just different. It's got the history. It's not you know somebody running around in jeans with rhinestones all over them and a tight black T-shirt yelling at things. You know, I mean, it's really a real show. <laughs> yeah, they have that one guy. He's with... flexing. He's flexing. Yeah. <laughs> uh oh. He knows who we're talking about. <laughs> oh yeah, it's oh, interesting. Yeah. Hey, we all have uh, our opinions on things. Yeah, we all have <laughs> our opinions. We 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 kind of our old show. We used to voice them because we we did like a blog talk. Oh my God! It was a nightmare. Yeah. We would just and anybody and everybody was fair game. And then we got video. We got going on video, and then we're like, we we we, we change. You know, <laughs> off air, yeah, we kind of joke around and stuff. But on air, it's like, yeah. let's focus. Let's knock this out. Let's make this as interesting as possible to the best of all of our ability. You know, so but um, we do have to close up shop now, John. Um, okay. with that. Anything you want to say to close up? No, I, I want to thank John for coming on. You have been a great guest. And like I said, I, I hope they get a second season going. Well, write a &E, Email a &E and tell them you want more Cursed. Send, and, uh, send it. We could do a campaign. <laughs> hey, bring it because uh, I, I, I think they got, uh, from my understanding, I think they got uh, they got a a pretty good amount of um, emails on that and feedback and uh, a, more the more the merrier. Let's rock it. <laughs> we'll send them Just this interview. Right. We'll send them this interview and like we'll after we get okay. the show and outro, we'll say, hey, this says it all right here. <laughs> okay, guys. Well, I do want to um, I do want to say thank you very much, John, for coming on, dude. Well, thanks for awesome. having me on. Totally awesome. And everybody else, have a good night. <laughs>